Welcome to Chatufa TV Productions. Chatufa TV Productions, connecting you to the world. Good day, family. Welcome once again to your favorite channel, Chatufa TV Productions. If you are joining us for the very first time today, I can assure you this is an extraordinary channel. This is a channel of uh, academics. This is a channel of proper research. This is a channel of facts. This is not a hearsay channel. This is not just a channel that is seeking to just amuse people or just to draw people for the sake of views and likes. But we are looking at real fundamental issues that are happening in our nation, Zimbabwe. And the real researched information is very educational, very academic, and very professional. I want to encourage you, if you are joining us for the very first time, that you also subscribe like the rest of the other people have done and join this family. Subscribe, like, and share. And I guarantee you that you will indeed enjoy the content of this channel. Last time I promised that I was going to come and talk about the hurdles that Emerson Mnangagwa faces constitutionally in his bid to extend his term to the third term. For those that have watched a video that is entitled citizens of Zimbabwe's war against dictatorship, we have spoken about the character of the dictator and we explained so much about how much dictators lie to themselves. They lie to people, they lie to themselves, just like what the devil does. He lies to himself and he lies to his own people. So we are going to be looking into how he is trying to do the unimaginable, trying to do the impossible. But because he thinks he is the superior one, he is the one who is, you know, above everything. So he can do anything. He thinks he's invincible. He thinks he can walk on the water. And he thinks he can do anything at any time as much as he wants. But we are looking at a very, very difficult scenario. There is a video that we have on this channel where I spoke about the resistance that Emerson Mnangagwa faced when he first attempted to call for a meeting a top hierarchy meeting where he wanted to discuss the idea of having the third term. And uh, sources that we have have indicated that uh, people banked that meeting. And I want to assure you, this channel has direct sources that are within the corridors of power. When you see this channel posting things, we don't just post assumptions. We don't just post analysis. But we are posting even information that we are getting from high level of sources. I even have some information which I at times I'm not even allowed by my sources to post because it would be a bit like obvious that somebody must have leaked that information. So we have direct sources. Right. So the meeting was banked and many of uh, those that were supposed to attend the meeting showed disgruntlement. It means there is already a resistance of his bid to uh, extend the term into the third term. And also, we saw the idea of cutting the membership, or rather the, con uh, the congregates that are supposed to be coming for the ZANU-PF Congress. Nangagwa wants to reduce that number from 4,000 to a very, very small number of less than 3,000 because he is deeming, he is supposing that there is a lot of resistance and there is a lot of uh, antagonism that could happen against his move towards uh, securing a third term in office. But besides the pressure that is uh, coming around him of legitimacy of disputed elections, despite the pressure that is coming from international organizations, EU, COMESA, the Commonwealth, the African Union, SADC, and also right now the impending situation that has just happened in Mozambique where the opposition party has succeeded in nullifying a sham of election 
the same way that he had done in Zimbabwe and he thinks he's surviving. Mozambique, the courts have stood with the opposition, elections have been nullified and this is all the fire that continues to increase burning around the continuation of the throne of Emerson Monangagwa. This video today seeks now to explain constitutionally the other hurdles that he faces in the constitution. Remember the saying is Shabang story, it is a ZANU PF making, a counterintelligence making, that they are trying to see if Emerson Mnangawa could be able to seek to nullify some members of parliament positions from Bulawayo. Out of the 15 that he used this uh, Shabangu to uh, recall, uh, they are in the process of seeing if they can succeed. And unfortunately, now there is also probably, I call it another counter intelligence that is also written a letter to nullify 70 MPs of ZANU PF. You see, when we say God is on the move in the nation of Zimbabwe, we really mean it. Something is indeed happening. We are yet to see. Just relax, citizens, relax. You have not seen anything yet. There is so much drama that is going to be unfolding every day until the day that these men are going to carry their clothes in pillowcases and cross the Kariba uh, dam on canoes running away. I don't know which direction. I just hope they should not be rushing to Zambia because we will catch them very fast. So the constitution itself, it does have a lot of hurdles that he has to face. I hope he does understand the kind of... Uh, tricky situation that he is in and I'm going to be using the constitution today to try and explain how difficult it is going to be for his dream. He said the opposition's call for a new fresh election is just a pipe dream but I see another pipe dream also in his attempt to extend his term to another third term. I don't see him succeeding because there is so much at stake. There is so much that is uh, standing on his way that could possibly really be a, a headache to him and uh, he is succeeding on this one we are yet to see but the chances are next to zero we don't stop him from dreaming he might continue to dream on uh, as always as he continues to dream when he looks at Zimbabwe and its people the constitution of Zimbabwe itself can be amended but its amendment cannot be automatic, especially when it comes to other sections. For example, the section that deals with the issue of Emerson Mnangagwa's uh, bid to extend his term, it is very, very controversial. It is one that is securely, securely protected, that nobody could uh, find himself just coming up, waking up from one day and try and uh, fight against it. The term limit of two terms, especially for the presidential, is found in section 91, subsection 2 of the Zimbabwean constitution. And this one stipulates that the bearer of an office must run for two consecutive terms, after which he cannot proceed, even if uh, the party could still need him, or even the nation could still want to vote him. He is not allowed by the law of the land to proceed. So, the Constitution of Zimbabwe, Section 328, Subsection 6, it states that a constitutional bill amending any of these provisions has been passed by the National Assembly and Senate. It must be submitted to a national referendum where it can only pass with a majority. Right. Remember, Emerson Nangagwa is trying to have two-thirds majority, which he could not attain during the sham of an election, this drama of an election that he did. Still, he failed to garner two-thirds of parliamentarians in, uh, in the House of Assembly. What it means now is when it comes to the amendment of constitution for him to have a third term, he will not be able to do it without a, a two-thirds majority. Automatically, culturally, and normally, the opposition will oppose it. So you will need some members from the opposition to support this idea, failure of which his own MPs, even if they would all vote for it, they still cannot uh, make two-thirds of uh, the parliamentary votes that are needed to move this motion. And uh, having said also that there is a lot of tension already in the parliament and also in the party, it is also going to be very tricky whether he is indeed going to have all 
MPs voting for the constitutional bill. Yes, he might cause them to vote by the raising of hands. They usually do that. I saw the ANC in South Africa doing that when the parliament was supposed to vote on the issue of the Palapala scandal of uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. The normal culture of uh, secret voting was cancelled and they decided to have every uh, member of parliament raising his hand. So this is a, an intimidatory tactic so that they actually look at you as you are opposing the president right in front of everybody. So because of the fear of victimization, many would find themselves now towing the line. So in the event that it would be done on secret ballot, it can produce very amazing results. What it means now is in the event that possibly he has received a two-thirds majority in parliament, I don't know how he will have obtained them because already he's facing a hurdle of having short of that number and now trying to see if he can uh, cook around the figures by recalling MPs from the opposition. Now he also has his own 70 recalled also from parliament. It is going to be a mammoth task for him really. So let us say in the event that he is voted for by the two-thirds of MPs in parliament, that they want to amend section 91 subsection 2 uh, of the term limits still a referendum must be done where it can only pass with majority right his mps have voted for him to change section 91 subsection 2 of uh, two terms limit now he wants to go into the third term you will still have to go for a referendum I don't know how many of the young people understand about referendum. The referendum is a kind of a voting where the whole nation will have to vote for an idea. This was done again around 2000 when uh, Robert Mugabe was defeated. It's a matter of voting yes or no. It's actually an a kind of an election. So the referendum will have to be done. And this referendum, he has to make sure that citizens of Zimbabwe would support the idea. So I don't know whether you again want to rig the referendum or whether you will succeed to rig the referendum. I don't know if he's going to succeed on that one. So in terms of extending a term limit, even if it goes through, President Manangagwa would not benefit from that section. There is another issue. According to section 328, subsection 7, notwithstanding any other provision of this section, an amendment to a term limit provision, the effect of which is to extend the length of time that a person may hold or occupy any public office, does not apply in relation to a, any person who held or occupied that office or an equivalent office at any time before the amendment. So what section 328 subsection 7 is simply saying all right, you have been voted by your MPs two-thirds to extend your term to extend uh, the section of term limits which is section 91. Then you have gone for an amendment right? and then before the amendment you are going for a referendum and you win again the referendum majority of Zimbabweans have voted that he can go for a third term there is yet another clause, which is the sub subsection 7, which is saying now the president who has effected that amendment, we in this case Emerson Mnangagwa, if he succeeds, still there's a section of the constitution that says he himself cannot benefit from that kind of amendment. It means it will have to benefit the person that comes after him. So any incumbent president who pushes for such an amendment, will he himself not benefit? from the same amendment that he has done. So there is another hurdle again that he will face. So if he succeeds, then it will benefit the next president, not him. But now in this case, we are looking at him. He is the one who needs it. He's the one who is fighting for it. So what does he have to do now? Moreover, the constitution makes it clear that an amendment to either uh, chapter 4 or 16 of the term limit cannot be amended in the same bill nor be put to the citizens in the same referendum so this is another story again let me explain what it is saying here right now that uh, 
there is a clause which is saying you the one who is pushed for this amendment of the third uh, term you will not benefit from it yourself which means you will have to come again and amend again the section subsection 7 and when he does subsection 7 it means now he will still have to go to another referendum and the constitution does not allow two referendums to be done in the same time you cannot have two referendums running concurrently so there are processes that are needed here which i'm going to be talking about here two processes first amendment of term limit it requires two-thirds majority in parliament and a referendum number two you will need to section 328 subsection 7 you will have to amend that one which says he can't benefit or it can't benefit the incumbent he will have again to have two-thirds majority and then another separate referendum and the Zimbabweans will again have to say yes to that other referendum of which that is very very doubtful if ever it can be happening considering the situation and is he going to be able to rig two referendums concurrently we are yet to see the two referendums can be held concurrently like what I have said before. So what Mnangagwa needs is two-thirds majority in parliament, which he does not have. Constitutional referendum approving that amendment. He will have to remove the non-benefit clause, another two-thirds majority in parliament, and another second referendum. And I don't know, looking at the situation on the ground, whether he is going to succeed. I don't know if he will think he will succeed according to his wisdom or his foolishness. But understanding him as we do, he thinks he can push over everything. He thinks he can force over everything. He thinks he can walk over anything. Let us give him this litmus test to see how he succeeds on this one. It is going to be a, a mammoth task. It's a mountain to climb, but he will still want to prove that he can still do it. We will see how much resistance that is coming against him. We will see how much fights are going to come against him and whether he is going to find himself succeeding in any of these. And uh, for any reasons, we are still surprised why he still wants to amend a constitution. The constitution cannot continue to be amended. Looking at the situation, looking at what is happening in the nation, looking at how he has run down the country, looking how the economy is doing, looking at how unfavorable he is even in his own partisan PF, looking at how he is surviving through rigging of elections, looking at right now the pressure of uh, the city is sitting on, the pressure of uh, the legitimacy issue that is surrounding his presidency. So all these are issues that are standing, there are hurdles that are standing along the way of Emerson Mnangagwa. We are yet to see if he succeeds. This one we are opening our eyes to it. Let's watch and see. But I can assure the citizens that there's a lot of drama that is coming ahead. There's a lot. Zimbabwe will continue to be trending. Zimbabwe will continue to be in the limelight. Zimbabwe will continue to be on the front page of news as we are going towards the fall of this dictatorship. But what I can assure you is Emerson Mnangagwa is just heading towards is fall. He is heading towards a brick wall. There is no way he is ever going to succeed. There is no way that he is ever going to go through this without bruising everyone. If ZANU-PF were to be clever and intelligent, they must quickly move and remove Emerson Mnangagwa because this man, as of now, he is a liability. He is going to sink with everybody. He is going to go down with everybody. If they need to save themselves, they should quickly get rid of this man. So this is what we will needed to discuss on the hurdles that he faces as the constitution continues to block him. Till we meet again in the next video, God bless you and God bless Zimbabwe. Put your comment in the section box. I want to hear what you think. Do you think you will pass through these amendments and succeed? Do you think Zimbabwe will vote yes in the referendums? Do you think his own MPs will vote unanimously? Do you think you will attain the two-thirds anyway, which he does not have as of now? Put your comment. We want to hear what you think. You are blessed.